pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out the cold and joining us this evening. We'll begin with public audience. Is there anyone who'd like to address the board yet? General Cove, 26 Whitcomb Drive. Now that we have a consultant reviewing the selectman's office, it's time for the consultant to observe the need for a professional town manager. All the consultants in the past have recommended that Simsbury can institute a town manager for our government. With the stock market losing over 600 points last week, we need professional guidance and long-term planning. A town manager has the temperament and intellectual capacity to guide the town with decreased revenues, reduced grand lists, and wasting taxpayer money on political lobbying groups. Would anyone go to a general practitioner for a heart transplant? Probably they would try to get the best physician with experience to deliver the best results. Would the person want to have a pseudo-surgeon for this heart transplant? Probably not. So why should the taxpayers be satisfied with a high-maintenance pseudo-town manager to deliver our services? I would urge this board to place the town manager issue on the agenda for discussion and vote. It appears that we will be bottom fishing for a financial director since the town did not use the free government finance offices of Connecticut GFAOA website, which all professionals use for employment. Although First Selectman Mary Glassman sent me an email to debunk my allegations, there appears to be no listings for the town of Simsbury on the GFOA website. Why the oversight? I am very pleased that the Board of Finance chose Peter Askham as the Chairman of the Board of Finance in a unanimous vote. The Board of Finance suggested that the budgets forwarded them should reflect a minus one decrease, zero increase, or a plus one increase in order to become more competitive with the surrounding towns. It would suggest, I would suggest that the budget should also reflect with an asterisk placed on money taken out of the general fund or grants used to fund the operating budget. The budget should be transparent and easy to understand. It appears from my review of the town's website, there are many deficiencies. The website has a picture of the past Board of Selectmen members, the name of past Executive Secretary to the First Selectmen, and the Tax Department's webpage has a bulletin stating that, oh, let me take that away, okay, stating that, and I quote, uh, there is a problem with this website's security certificate. The security certificate presented by this website has expired or is not valid. Security certificate problems may indicate an attempt to fool you or intercept any data you send to the server. We recommend that you close this web page and do not continue to this website." End quote. Are we having a target moment? How secure is this website and has anyone's computer been attacked? I would like to have an explanation for this oversight on the security of the website. I recently reviewed the 2011-990 tax return for the community farm of Simsbury and noticed that they documented the buildings and equipment on the property with a book value of 238863 Since they don't own the building, should this be reflected in their tax return? Reflected in the comprehensive annual report for 2013, there are several notations where money was appropriated and not used. On page 42, construction commitments for the town of projects, emergency management generators were allocated $74,000 and only $77 was used. $77,600 was appropriated for town security and no money was used. Under the Board of Education projects, there was a surplus of $6,877,977 from the Simsbury High School addition and alteration that was completed. The school security measures show an authorization for $177,000 and nothing was spent. There were many expenditures in both budgets that had overruns or surpluses. 
what happens to the money in these accounts when the projects are completed. It appears that the special revenue for the fund of, uh, for Simsbury Farms has a $234,950, that's on page 37, deficit, and money was transferred from the general fund to this fund that was set up to be self-sufficient. Why should the taxpayers subsidize the Simsbury golf course? The taxpayers can no longer support an appropriation of $50,000 for a non-government agency, the Main Street Partnership. I am concerned about the huge increases in salaries that have been approved by this board. Many of our employees are outstanding in, the, uh, in their accomplishments. The board should be mindful that this is the taxpayers' money and huge salary increases are not reflective of the increases in the private market. We have a public works director that was employed by the town in 2008 with a salary of 98500 He received a bonus of 2000 for outstanding efforts during the storm. His salary was increased in 2012 to 102000 and in 2013 to 106600 and then again in 2014 to 116000 as an incentive not to find other employment. However, by increasing the public work director's salary, you increase the salaries to employees above them, and we end up with an untenable spiral in salaries with taxpayers' money. Both First Selectman Mary Glassman and Tom Cook's salary as Director of Administrative Services, acting as pseudo-town manager below the salary of 116000 How many Simsbury taxpayers have received these increases in their salaries over the past years? This board should be mindful of the taxpayers who pay the bills when approving these costly increases. <coughs> Recently, action was taken by this board to reduce the assessment with an 8,298 reduction in taxes from a clean affiliate. Hoffman Prop Enterprises Limited Partnership reduced their assessment to $143 per square foot for their buildings. Will this become the benchmark for all Simsbury buildings? It appears that if taxpayers, if taxpayers lawyer up and challenge their assessments, they get their taxes reduced. When taxes are reduced by one entity, the taxpayers have to make up the difference. Recently, there was an article in the Hartford Current addressing the opinion column by West Hartford's teacher, Elizabeth Natale. Her concerns have highlighted many of the concerns of Simsbury teachers in the annual report that I had received from an FOI request. Having new initiatives thrown into the school system without appropriate training is doomed to failure for the teachers and the students. Many schools have embraced the Pearson software for student assessment. It appears that this program is another cookie cutter approach to teaching and assessing teachers. Children are not robots and one size does not fit all. Before these programs are embraced, I would suggest that our Board of Education evaluate these new initiatives and determine whether these initiatives have positive or negative effects on our teachers and students. <coughs> Thank you. And I will post my comments on www.simsbury.com and Simsbury Patch. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Anyone else would like to address the board? Yes, sir. Robert Kalishman, Simsbury. Uh, Ms. Cook, Esquire, uh, I usually give everybody, a, when they come on the board, a copy of the United States Constitution. And uh, hopefully you're well aware of it being an attorney. And of course, I brought along a copy of the Connecticut State Constitution, if there's any question on my presentation this evening. I wouldn't want Mr. Payne to feel slighted. I know, Mr. Payne. Uh, Bring another copy. You'll have one next time. No problem. I, I can well, you use know, I have one. You, you do? Before he you gets started. You can have one. In fact, I have one. <laughs> I have one. I carry one with me. There you go. In case there's a <laughs> question. Thank, Thank you very you much. You're welcome. Good evening. Uh, this evening I was going to, I had a, an agenda set out. I was going to discuss the uh, marijuana operation and the actions of the uh, zoning board in their giving a permit. And it looks to me as if uh, we're going to get that, uh, we're going to get that uh, license from the state 
And the reason I'm hanging my hat on that is the fact that a lot of communities, unlike Simsbury, have decided this is such a sensitive subject and there's so much involved in it that what they want to do is they want to discuss and they've asked for moratoriums so they can discuss it further. And uh, in my opinion, this is what the board should have done. And uh, the board didn't do anything about it. The zoning board did their own thing. And where does it end? The Iron Frog, they left, right? You, what did you do? We laid all that uh, favoritism on the uh, Redstone and the Iron Frog just folded their tent and they left. So you keep on favoring these these taxpayers over another taxpayer, you're going to have a you're going to have a problem eventually. But uh, what I'm here for today is that I went on the uh, the uh, the net and I received the agenda, and I looked and I seen creation of community for care committee, and I looked at it. And I clicked on, and fortunately for me, there was an attachment. And in the attachment, they had a submission, and it explained that uh, there was going to be a presentation and a creation of this committee this evening. So I called a few people. I made a few inquiries, and I found out that it was a grant. And when I inquired as to uh, what, who was going to pay for this, they said a state grant. So I said, fine, what's the state grant? Nobody knew what the amount was. I turned around, and I called my state senator, and I asked him. Had no record of it, didn't know anything about it. I, in turn, contacted the representative, my representative, and uh, she knew nothing about it. She investigated it, and as late as 4.30, nobody knew what the amount was. I uh, still don't know what the amount is. And you're going to be asked this evening to vote on the agenda create a committee, and you're not going to know what the state grant is. In addition to that, I made inquiries around, and the people I spoke with, or I shouldn't say correction, the, the people I heard about it indicated that they, know, they had no knowledge they were being appointed to this committee, i.e. the police chief, i.e the uh, director of social services. So here you have a committee. You're putting everybody on it. You don't know how, how much it's going to cost. And don't tell me it's a state grant. State grants are tax money. Don't let anybody fool you that you're getting the money from out of the sky. You're not. A state grant is state taxpayers' money. And somebody has to pay for it. And you're wondering, we have the most highest state taxes that have ever been in the state of Connecticut right now. You're being overtaxed. And, we still, and we're still in a deficit. And I'll debate that with anybody in this room. So getting back, getting back to, the, to this program here is, I, uh, how can you vote on something? You're going to hear it, and an hour later, or 15 minutes later, or more than likely five minutes later, you're going to vote on it and make a committee. And let's think about the youngsters that I feel are going to be involved here. Here you're going to take, and you're going to have a committee that's going to sit in Simsbury, and they're going to discuss a student at one of the schools, or a parent that sends their student child to one of the schools and they're going to point the finger. Do we have a professional psychiatrist on this committee 
That's who it takes. And don't tell me I'm not sensitive with this thing. You know, I had a brother Marine that blew out his brains. Came back from Afghanistan. Couldn't take it. 24th Marine Regiment. Blew out his brains. Called around for help. Couldn't get any help. We need, psych we need psychiatrists as far as the veterans are concerned. And the citizens, if you're going to start bringing people and recommending people, we need a psychiatrist. We don't have a full-time psychiatrist in the high school. I don't even think we have a full-time physician out there. This thing was ill-conceived, ill-planned. And I haven't even got into it with the Connecticut Constitution. You're going into people's lives. You have no right to go into their lives. We have a Connecticut state constitution. And for the lawyers here that aren't aware of it, and I feel you're all aware of it, for the lawyers, the Connecticut state constitution is stronger than the United States constitution. And you're going to start delving into people's backgrounds and, and, and calling parents? No. That's against the Constitution. If you could summarize, Mr. Kalish. Right. It's been five and the forefathers, right? The forefathers of Simsbury, we did away with the tyranny of the English king. And we're not going to replace it, in my opinion. We're not going to replace it with the tyranny of the Democratic Party. We don't need it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, Larry Winonis with Simsbury Free Bike and the Bicycle Advisory Committee. Can I have a few minutes? You may. Larry, could you just come up to the front um, so that we can hear you on SCTV? That would be great. <clears throat> well, I have nothing but good news for you. Uh, positive results that have been taking place over the last few years here in Simsbury. <clears throat> Attracting visitors, bicyclists, healthy activities people who are using our trails, our kayak facilities. <clears throat> Uh, all of our open spaces, we're fortunate enough to have, oh, 32% of our land, about 7,500 acres out there for people to use, been put aside since 1850. It's been growing. <clears throat> uh, visitors coming to our town uh, to use our recreational facilities have been on the increase. <clears throat> uh, Century Free Bike started as a bike sharing program at Andy's Supermarket three years ago or two years ago with <clears throat> six bikes. We had 125 people use our services. Uh, we've grown to 1,200 people using our services, the, the largest bike sharing program in Connecticut. <clears throat> we've now expanded our presence into the school systems by providing as many as 20 bicycles for the fourth graders to learn how to ride bikes. Um, and any given day in the summer, you'll see as many as 1,000 people coming into our town. Uh, they're using our restaurants. They're using our shops. <clears throat> they're making purchases at our gas stations. They're the people we want. And we're promoting a healthy lifestyle, not only for our children, but for our adults. Um, <clears throat> we're getting people out there using the recreational facilities that we've been acquiring for over 100 years. And it's our opinion that this is the way we can grow economically in this town, by making this town a recreational destination. There's certainly nothing like what we have. Nobody has a trail system of bicycles. Nobody has hundreds of uh, walking trails. Nobody has the assets that we have uh, <clears throat> within the town to and include uh, the land trust, a uh, thousand acres there of open space the state parks, the city parks, the forests. We really need to take the time and we need to plan out how we can invite people to come to our town and use those assets and sell the fact that we have them. <clears throat> uh, we have a connectivity problem we're working on trying to tie in all these parks and places uh, that they, they can be easily assessed you know, on foot or by bicycle. Um, most of the um, upkeep of all the trails that we have in town are done by volunteers. Uh, and it's been that way for years. We don't ask a penny from the town. There's, there's not a budget item on there. There's hundreds of volunteers. We had a trail cleanup last year. <clears throat> and the Trails Council, the 40 miles of trails that we had, 
There were 200 volunteers that helped clean up. 119 of those people were volunteers from Simsbury alone. Uh, Simsbury Free Bike <coughs> is a totally independent operation. We receive no funding from the town whatsoever. But from time to time, there are things that we can't do ourselves. We do uh, have to come to the town from time to time to ask for funds to maintain uh, some of the trails and some of the outskirts that we have up here that we're incapable of doing ourselves. <clears throat> so we put together some budgetary items uh, that we'd like to discuss. I'll mention a couple of them to you. And again, we're on the road to becoming one of the premier bicycle destinations in the United States and recognized by the League of American Bicyclists <clears throat> as a bicycle friendly community. We're trying to get the next step from bronze to silver, and <clears throat> we're doing quite well uh, proceeding along the path. <clears throat> so, if you use the trail as many of us do, <clears throat> I do on a regular basis, you'll notice immediately that it's kind of decayed in places. And that, that's because it's so old. We have the first trail. We actually have one of the oldest trails in the United States. It's a segment of the trail system that goes through Stratford Park dates back to 1972. And it's probably one of the oldest 10 sections of the, the trail system in the United States. We also have a loop trail that comes in from Canton that ties in a whole other uh, section of towns that very few, few people are aware of. Uh, and it terminates on West Mountain Road and ends up uh, coming in an old rail path from there into Strattonburg Park via the town forest. That needs to be resurfaced so we can have people on road bikes and, and people in transit that can come directly into the town of Simsbury. Once you get into Strattonburg Park, you have no idea how to get to Simsbury, so we're looking to get some monies for signage. Uh, when you travel the trail system, many people come here from West Hartford and all over. We've actually documented that 70% of the people that come here and use our facilities in town are from out of town. We've had people, demographic studies that we've done based on uh, the information we've obtained from waivers, uh, 70, 65 to 70 percent of the people who use injury free bikes are from out of town. We haven't been able to capture that. We haven't been able to attract those people, and they do spend a lot of money. And we need to ex exploit that more and more and more. But we can't maintain the trail, these um, <coughs> volunteers, without some capital assets. We do need to make some repairs to fencing. We need to make some repairs to uh, trail surfaces. Uh, once you ride into Simser, you can see immediately that that needs to be addressed. And I've ridden the trail all the way from New Haven all the way up to Northampton. And I, I must say that the condition of our trail is one of the poorest side of the county. We do need, need to adjust that to attract more and more riders. Um, I would expect that uh, um, based on the evidence that I've been looking at from the Trails Council on their counters, that we've uh, probably been seeing a 20 to 25 percent increase in usage every year for the last five years. Just the Trails Council membership alone has grown from 400 five years ago to over 2,000 today. So this is a, a growth that we want to definitely get our hands on. Um, so we're looking to replace some of the fence that's been decayed. It's 10 or 20 years old. We're looking to uh, fix some of the root problems on the trail system. We're looking to get some more bicycle racks in town. Um, we've also had a group of people who removed fencing that was no longer needed, saving the town tens of thousands of dollars over the years. We'll continue to do that. Uh, again, we do this for free. But we're unable to do asphalt paving. We're unable to come up with monies necessary to replace old fencing, although the Trails Council is willing to um, fund 50% of any uh, improvements to the trail to include center lining and fence replacement. We've been doing that for years. Uh, as a matter of fact, $30,000 has been put aside in the coming year to do improvements on the trail in Canton and in Burlington, which has a lot of root problems. So um, we did, in fact, uh, give Mary a copy of this budget, uh, and there's items on here that I don't want to get into in detail, uh, nor do I want to discuss the amounts that we put on them, but uh, we do need some help from the town in funding that hell of a lot of money. Uh, again, we do most of everything that we do for free. But we do see a lot of growth in tourism, and a lot of growth in visitors, and uh, we're trying to get an economic development plan uh, to address that because there's thousands and thousands of dollars in people that we need to capture. And we need to get them to stay here and spend more money. 
Do we have any questions that was needed? Thank you, Larry. We yeah. appreciate your being here and all the volunteers. And uh, we look forward to uh, sharing your list of uh, main maintenance items, which we really appreciate. For all maintenance items. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Anyone else would like to address the board this evening? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Patty Jacobitz. I'm 22 Harvest Hill in West Simsbury. Um, I'm part of the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, and I have a very brief request. It's for your next meeting. And uh, the committee, as you may or may not know, is currently putting together a, an application proposal to the League of American Bicyclists for um, silver designation, moving up from bronze. And one of the things that we think is really important to get our message to the League is that everyone, that's all of our selectmen, uh, are behind the initiatives. And we're, we're going to send you a, a recommendation for a resolution that can be signed by all the selectmen in support of what we're doing. So we're just asking if you would put it on the agenda for, for the next uh, meeting. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And uh, look forward to your presentation next meeting. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to address the board? Okay. If not, I would just like to take a moment to introduce our new town engineer. Uh, Jeff Shea is with us this evening. So, Jeff, welcome to the town of Simsbury. Uh, we had a number of wonderful applicants uh, for this position. It's a tough, tough position to fill because Rich Sawitzki has served our town so well. Uh, but we were thrilled when a neighbor, uh, Jeff, who worked for the town of Canton, was interested with all his years of experience. Um, has uh, really been a great addition to our team. And uh, we look forward to having you on board, Jeff. Congratulations. Uh, our first tonight, we are pleased to have two presentations. Our first is uh, we have Pastor Woody Eddins here with us this evening. Welcome, Pastor Woody. Uh, we're thrilled to uh, come on up. Yeah. We're thrilled to uh, to have Woody here tonight. Um, the creation, if I could just uh, briefly introduce uh, the crea uh, the creation of the community for care committee. Um, the initiative stemmed from uh, a lot of the concerns. Uh, certainly, the new town tragedy. Um, it, we began having conversations with uh, our clergy association folks in town. May not realize what a great relationship uh, the town and the schools enjoy with our clergy. Uh, from all faiths and we meet regularly and we talk about issues that are important to the community and what we're seeing and uh, stem from an initiative where the clergy the town staff uh, the board of ed got together and said what more can we do to highlight some of the programs that are out there um, there is no grant uh, to create this so i just want to clarify some of the earlier comments uh, there is no funding uh, required this is completely voluntary uh, the group uh, will look for uh, grants to help us implement some programs. It is modeled after the community of, of concern in Canton. Uh, we're, for, we're grateful to our uh, neighbors in Canton for working with us. There's been a number of presentations um, from uh, the community of concern in Canton on how that uh, initiative has really worked well for their community. Um, parents are involved in Canton and clergy and school staff and town staff and uh, volunteer. So we're uh, grateful uh, that this uh, initiative is coming forward uh, tonight for us. And uh, with that introduction, I'll ask uh, Pastor Woody to uh, give us a brief overview. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. <clears throat> She said, my name is Woody Eddins. I'm pastor of the Methodist Church here in town. I apologize for my voice. I've had a rough cold and laryngitis, so I may just stop talking some point. <laughs> I do want to say it's wonderful to live in a town like Simsbury with uh, so much to offer and hearing about all the bikes and the expansion. It's, I enjoy it. It's a great place to live. That said, I work in a place that doesn't pay taxes. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we know that. <laughs> I think the selectmen, I've talked to several of them about uh, this initiative and uh, as well as with Diane Altman and then later with Matthew Curtis, started with my concern actually about um, drug use that's here in town. I uh, have unfortunately had the opportunity to do uh, two funerals since I've been here of people who have died from drug overdoses and I've seen other issue, uh, drug related issues where parents struggle with this. and with needing somewhere to turn and not knowing where to go to support it, to get support. Um, some families go through some awful times uh, simply because they didn't know what resources were available and where they were. Not only with addiction, but with other mental health issues as well. 
And answers are certainly not easy to come by. Some answers are found in our educational system. Simsbury is blessed. We have a wonderful educational system, but they can't do it all. They don't have all the answers. We are blessed with a compassionate and efficient law enforcement system here in town, but all the answers are not, can't be done by, uh, through the law enforcement either. And there are many other individuals and groups that want to contribute to do what they can. And I have been over to Canton to see the community of concern that they have and the opportunities it brings up when all these groups get together and sit around a table together and share concerns, not about individuals, but about issues that are going on within the community. This proposal is for a group to gather to discuss issues related to mental health, to substance abuse, to offer help to those who are in need, who are struggling to find some direction, propose ideas, to offer educational programs, other options that may come up. By having all the players there at one time, we can share our resources, learn what's going on, so we can help guide people when they are struggling with issues. Um, the town I was in before, in Bristol, where I worked, I was on Substance Abuse Council. And one of the things we had the opportunity to do was put together programs and then apply for state funding for that particular program. And so that would be the only funding that would be available, which wouldn't be the state would offer some programs. And those were very good and very well attended. And I think they were very helpful for families and for the youth as well. So what this proposal is, is a community of care. And I've been asked if I would kind of coordinate it. I'm really not looking for more work, but uh, no one else is jumping forward to say they will chair the program, so I'll do what I can. Would involve the police chief of the town, director of social services of the town, of youth services, represent, certainly representatives from the educational system, assistant superintendent of schools, uh, principals of the high school, the middle school, school counselors, if that seemed to be the most appropriate. and. It also concerned parents, parents who've struggled with these issues, and oftentimes they're the ones who have the most to offer from their own struggles that they have been through. Um, talked a lot about the possibility of a student being on this committee, and there are certainly the positives in what a student could bring with their ideas and their perspective. There's a difficulty with that as well, with someone under 18 who's a member of the committee. Uh, would adults feel free to discuss everything, and would it be right for them to hear everything that was all the issues that were being discussed. So perhaps a student is an associate member that would be there sometimes on invitation. And um, I wanted to put this before the board and uh, offer it as a possibility, and I'll be more than happy to help in any way I can to facilitate it. Thank you. We're very grateful uh, to your support and guidance and initiative and leadership on this. Thank you. Thank Lisa. you. Lisa. Um, Woody, I want to thank you for bringing this to our attention and uh, all your work in putting together. It did involve um, meeting with both town and Board of Ed staff to evaluate what they were doing and whether they felt there was a need for this. And you'll see on the proposal that comes forth, this is a town, a Simsbury Public Schools initiative. It's the school system evaluated and are supporting it with the people that they have listed that those were the people they felt would add value the town the chief of police and mickey were involved in discussions with um sue seidel at the community of concern in canton they are aware of it through the first selectman they were chosen to serve on this committee it does um ask for four community members parents or others with an interest in this area and a student liaison i do want to um, just correct something that was said at um public audience that was not true there um, this board will not be giving treatment to individuals it will be sharing resources and making sure the community knows what resources are available there will be no discussions of students or parents and there will be no contact to parents or students who are struggling it is not an outreach community it is an education community as Mary said there is no state grant associated with it nobody's getting salary on this committee um, basically, the community for care is about solving problems as a community around issues of substance abuse and mental health. It's a community approach. Rather, what we found with the schools is that when students had concerns about mental health or drug addiction, or parents had those concerns, they would not go to the school resources because they were afraid of the stigma associated with it. Yes. But they didn't know where else to go. One of the things the town offers that nobody knew about 
was that um, we offer free counseling for families, five free sessions. But the idea is to pool our resources, see what everybody is offering, coordinate, and make sure everybody knows what we're offering so that we can share the information. So if someone came to Pastor Woody in confidence <laughs> with his uh, church member and ask, where do I go for help? Woody can say, well, the school offers this, the town offers this, let me give you the resources. Um, examples of uh, options and sources that this committee might deal with, that other committees have dealt with, would be um, letting the public know that the, uh, that the town offers limited free family counseling. It might be educating the public about new and dangerous and illegal drugs that has appeared in, Hart in the Hartford region, how to identify it, what to look for. It might, that might come from the police. They've done that in the past with the schools, but we thought it was important that but the church didn't get that information. Right. So it's keeping our left hand talking with our right. It might be about bringing in a guest or speakers to talk, just as an example, since my son is recovering from a concussion, about um, brain development or wiring and other issues related to substance abuse, what causes addiction, informational meetings. And um, it might be, as Mary started with her program, about um, suicide prevention with Tom Stein, it might be about informing the public about something as preventable as suicide. Suicide is a preventable mental occurrence action that happens, but there are signs of it, and we can educate the public. What are the signs you look for? And if you see them, what do you do? For instance, you might call 211, but people don't know the answers to that. So it's educating the public about what's out there. It, it is not individual treatment. It is not spying on people. We will have no contact with individuals who are struggling. There is no violation of privacy rights. There's no violation of the Constitution. This is fairly standard stuff. They do it in Canton. We broadened it. Canton does a community of concern, which is sort of a national program, where they put out a booklet that literally lists resources you can um, you have in your community and they publish it and they distribute it to the schools or the churches so it's a presenting useful information to the community and it is a community of care we changed the name so that's where some of the confusion was it was community of concern but we actually broadened it this just deals with substance abuse and we thought it was important to add the mental health component to it as well so that's why we don't use that brand um, but er, all, this is a recommendation not by me, not by Pastor Woody, but by Pastor Woody, the schools, and the town of Simsbury. And it was based on, after a tremendous amount of research, talking with other uh, similar groups in Canton, after evaluating the schools and the town's programs and needs, and making a recommendation, is this something that would benefit our community? And the joint unanimous decision was it was. And it will involve quarterly meetings to sort of coordinate what we're doing share information, and then see if there are joint projects we want to do. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks um, for your efforts. Oh, I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> uh, did you want to add anything? No, I just, we do I just later. wanted to uh, thank Mary, Lisa, and Cheryl, all of whom have uh, come to me, asked questions, and offered support in different ways about this program and their ideas. So thanks to all of you for that. Thank you. Sure. Well, I just wanted to say that I, I did contact Pastor Woody about this because um, I too share his concern about those resources available to parents and um, also other people. It doesn't, I, I'm not sure we should necessarily restrict it to students. Oh, that no, it's they should, And yes. that even though, you know, this came from the school system, that this would be a resource available to all Simsbury residents. And I, I think it's important to, to put that out there, that this is not just something for students, that this would benefit all of our residents, and that I feel very strongly it's important to have a s centralized information for people who are in crisis. And, you know, I, I've seen it a lot in my work outside of here, and it, it's the most important thing you can offer a family in crisis is just the information. So I'm, and I just thank you for bringing this forward. Follow up on what Cheryl said. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason we wanted to do this is we said it's not just a, some people think drugs is a school problem. Right. And what we found talking with Pastor Woody, social services, just in your day-to-day -day life, it's mm -hmm. a multi-generational exactly. problem. You will see seniors who are addicted to painkillers. Mm -hmm. um, you will see kids who take their grandparents' drugs. It is a multi-generational and multifaceted issue. 
it's not just happening at the schools. It's not just happening at the police department. It affects us all. And so we're trying to bring the connectedness together and problem solve together. And when we can work at prevention, it's so much more effective and so much more cost effective to help people at that level so people know it before they get desperate and don't know where to turn. Exactly. And just, I wanted to just reiterate, um, as uh, Pastor Woody said, uh, our staff has looked at it, our chief of police has met with the Canton yeah. officials, uh, our social service director has met uh, with, uh, with Canton officials, we've had a number of uh, reviews, we've uh, looked at opportunities to collaborate, we've had a number of meetings, uh, thank Lisa for uh, helping spearhead this with uh, through the Board of Education liaison. And uh, you know, it's really exciting that we're at the point now where we can announce this to the public, ask people to get involved, um, and uh, get get some feedback and report back to uh, the public how this is how this is working. So congratulations to you. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? What are we doing that now? Or are we talking about this again later? Oh, it's I put it on an appointment. <coughs> okay. So a pastor Woody doesn't have to stay. Okay. Because uh, we'll we'll that's my only question about the appointment process. Because so what we'll do tonight is endorse it. Uh, okay. What you'll see here is a list of suggested names. Yep. So uh, what I would suggest we do is start with uh, the suggested names. We don't. Uh, so they can have an organizational meeting, and um, we'll announce if parents or other folks are interested in participating, we can uh, come back with a full list. But we'll just uh, identify the folks who are uh, listed here, and then we'll move forward with, uh, once we get some interest from the public. Mary, I'll just add, we, in giving some thought as to why we didn't list individual names, we wanted this sustainable into the future, and it was for the position at the town and the Board of Ed. These are the positions that would be represented in, on the board, but um, I actually didn't request the appointment of people tonight. I just asked the formation of the committee, but we can certainly do that. Um, and we will follow the procedure that the town always follows. So after the first selectman's office put out a press release explaining that we're looking for members of the community to participate in what their interest should be and what the time commitment would be for serving. It does meet quarterly, but there may be opportunities to do research or help put on a program if the interest is there. So we did want to uh, make sure that we uh, appoint Woody before he decides not to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> the only uh, for tonight. We'll, uh, All right, and we'll get into the actual appointment process because I have some questions about who we can and can't appoint to boards and commissions in the yeah, town. Yeah, and, so. and again, this is, uh, they don't really need appointments. They don't need our we don't really need our approval to do this. Yeah. This is a great idea. Go do so, it. This is fantastic. Well, the, the nice community members do need. Yeah, and I, yeah. I do want the fact that um, town staff will be yeah. uh, putting resources and staffing and providing support. So uh, it is important that we endorse the process. Absolutely. That, no. Uh, no, forward. Yeah, no question there. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for being here this evening. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our next presentation. Justin Ellis, Director of Artistic Operations, is here from Hartford Symphony. He's got some exciting um, information for us tonight. And uh, get your checkbooks ready, because it looks like a great uh, performance is ahead. So welcome. Hello, everyone. As she said, I'm Justin Ellis. I'm with the Hartford Symphony. I work directly with Carolyn Kwan, our music director of the Hartford Symphony. And I'm very excited to be able to announce our 2014 Talcott Mountain Music Festival series. Um, the second I got to the Hartford Symphony was this August, and I was actually lucky in July when I was looking for a place to stay to attend one of the Talcott Mountain Music Festival concerts. It was the Sinatra concert. And I did not have in mind the enormity of what you all are able to present each summer. Um, I had just come from the Virginia Symphony where we kind of do pop-up events and what I saw here is a professional caliber, you know, internationally acclaimed music festival during the summer in the town of Simsbury. So with all that in mind, we started very quickly on how to best present another series for the next year. And we took a lot of feedback from surveys that were out, feedback from general people, and I think we've come up with a very exciting season. So we kick off on June 27th with Carolyn Kwong conducting a complete Mozart concert. It will involve the Mozart Symphony 36, which is his Lind Symphony, very popular symphony that he wrote when he was traveling through Austria. Mozart Piano Concerto Number 23, we believe will have a soloist from Yale School of Music. And it starts off with the Mozart Divertimento, and that's Carolyn's first concert of the series. And then 
one important thing to note that I'm very excited by is a lot of music directors disappear for the summer. They go for this international engagement, that national engagement, and Carolyn Kwan makes it a point to be able to commit at least to one performance with the Towns of Simsbury. She finds it very important. It's part of her community outreach aspect, and we're very excited that she's able to open up the season with us. After that, we go to Celebrate America, a staple for a lot of people here, and a conductor that we are working on confirming is actually recently a Grammy recipient, and he was a former Simsbury resident. He went to Simsbury High School. His name is Eric Dudley. He went through the school system. That's he cool. went to school at Yale, and we're very excited by the possibility of him coming here. I just got off the phone with him before this, and they just won for Roomful of Teeth as his ensemble, and they won last night for Chamber Ensemble Grammy. Wow. And he was lucky enough to be able to perform there as well, so we're very happy to re-engage him for this uh, production. After that, we move on to Broadway Rocks, which takes many different aspects of popular Broadway. Um, a lot of people are more used to the older Rodgers and Hammerstein, and the way that we decided to go about it was how do we connect with a different generation? And that goes with the big blockbuster Broadway production, such as Wicked, Lion King, Hairspray, and all those. So we're collaborating with this company out of New York with three very large stars, Kapathia Jenkins, Christina Knowles, and Rob Evans, and it is conducted by the arranger of the music, Randy Fleischer. So we're very excited about that presentation. After that, we move on to the music of Queen. Many of you remember the music of the Rolling Stones. This is the same lead singer, so we're planning on having extra security on stage since he seemed to have gotten ambushed during the concert. Um, That's interesting. Brody is an immaculate stage man. He's a complete showman, and he's the perfect representation of keeping Freddie Mercury's uh, image alive. We're very excited for that. It's conducted by Brent Havens, who packages a lot of these shows. They've been nationally tested, and um, we're very excited that we're able to present this, and it's such a high-caliber event. We end the season with a very special production of Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong by Byron Stripling. Many of you may know Byron Stripling as the artistic director of Columbia Jazz Orchestra. He was also in the 1988 musical Satchmo, he was picked nationally to be Louis Armstrong for the production, and he's co-starred with Marva Hicks, who's on Motown the Musical, and she's been in other movies and TV shows. And we feel that that's a very special show. It really touches into it. I've personally seen the show a couple times, and Byron is the best showman I've seen in the jazz circuit around. He connects with the audience. He knows how to read people. He knows how to make it a fun time. So we're very excited about the series. Um, the things to note is I do special rain dances. I've never been rained out for a concert, so we're looking forward to performing all concerts as originally scheduled. It's a very secret dance that I take backstage and involves a lot of prayer. Um, we're very excited that on July 3rd for the Celebrate America pending sponsorship that will once again have fireworks. And we're really excited about this series as it's kicking off the 19th season and moving into the 20th. So I think we're building upon success and looking towards the future. So I have flyers here for anyone who would like to pass it around. It does miss the asterisk, which says pending sponsorship for the fireworks. But I'll leave them up front. And if anyone has any questions, please find me afterwards. Or feel free to co contact me through our website. I'm always looking for responses and any inquiries about the series. I deal directly with the programming in Ms. Kwan. So I'm always looking for feedback and ideas of what you guys would like to see for this. Summer. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Justin. Thank Thanks you. for being thank here. So uh, the town of Missouri is thrilled to uh, be partnering with the Hartford Symphony. Some of us have been around long after remember uh, when we used to hold these in a cornfield. So uh, we've come a long way, and it's an exciting season. And uh, really, it's a tribute to you and uh, the people of Simsbury for supporting the concerts that enable us to uh, continue this. So congratulations, and if you. Uh, give us some flyers. We'll send them around. And tickets are on sale when? Tickets will be on sale soon. Um, we're still pending the date, but it'll be, I believe, around February 8th. Great. So just in time for Valentine's Day. Absolutely. You can buy your tickets out. and put them in a little cart. Yeah. So right. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here with us. <clears throat> we'll move on to the uh, first selectors report. I have a very brief report. Just want to remind uh, our residents that the budget workshops are set to begin in February, yeah. pursuant to the town charter. Uh, we'll receive the department head's budget this Friday. Then we will work over the next few weeks to develop a proposed budget to present to the Board of Selectmen on Thursday, February 27th. Uh, the Board of Selectmen has established the following workshop dates, so mark your calendar. Thursday, February 27th, Friday, February 28th, Saturday all day, so please come down and spend the day with us on uh, Saturday, March 1st. 
Friday, March 7th, Saturday, March 8th, Monday, March 10th, and uh, we will present uh, the budgets to the, uh, board of uh, the Board of Finance on uh, March 24th. So uh, please participate. This is your budget, and it ultimately goes to you as the voters uh, for approval, so please uh, participate. Uh, finally, we, uh, the Town of Simsbury is pleased to be participating in a statewide water strategic planning process. Uh, the University of Connecticut will host a conference and workshop intended to help Connecticut policymakers launch the process of creating a statewide plan for managing Connecticut's water sources. I want to thank the uh, vigilance and hard work of our residents, uh, the Board of Selectmen and our state level representatives uh, for enabling us to stop a um, diversion plan from the Farmington River, which threatened our very important natural resources and highlighted the need for a long-range water use. So I'm pleased to see the initiative underway. I think this is the first statewide conference um, which will take place at UConn Law School on February 3rd, and I'm uh, honored to participate. Uh, Governor Malloy will also speak at the conference, and there will be panel discussions, workshops, policymakers, and experts, and it will cover topics such as state-of-the-art plans from other states and models for water uh, resource allocation. So uh, we're excited to participate. Soon as we'll be well represented. Uh, we'll now move on to um, action items. Uh, we have an update on the Harford. Mary Ellen, excuse myself. I will uh, let the record show that. Uh, stepping out of the room. Snap the audience. <laughs> uh, we have some exciting updates uh, with cooperative efforts to help market the Hot Meadow site owned by the Hartford. Um, in a recent meeting with officials at the Hartford, we were informed that the Hartford plans to remain in the Simsbury facility through fiscal year 2014-2015. Uh, the Hartford will retain employees through the next fiscal year while they renovate their headquarters in Hartford. So we are pleased uh, to report also that there's been a lot of interest in the site as well. Um, so those are two good news uh, information updates. Uh, one, for our budget planning, uh, we can count on the same uh, revenue that we had anticipated in the past. And secondly, uh, with the economic development spinoff effects will continue uh, because there'll be uh, a full house at the Hartford site. So uh, we won't see any uh, decreases in traffic or um, in interest. Uh, we also have had a number of inquiries, uh, both uh, town inquiries and uh, through the Hartford brokers on the site, some serious and exciting opportunities that we can't disclose, but I did want to report that uh, that is a good sign uh, because the uh, property hasn't been on the market uh, for an extended period of time. Uh, the town and Hartford continue to work with Gateway Planning on revisions to the draft code for the Hartford property, and uh, those are based on comments that we have received from uh, the Hartford. Gateway is working to finalize a draft code so that it can be sent to the boards and commissions and made available to the public. Uh, when we do receive it, it will be posted on our website, so I encourage uh, folks to watch the website for any updates. Uh, the Gateway consultants have uh, scheduled February 18th to return to Simsbury. Uh, we are in the process of scheduling um, morning staff meetings and afternoon meetings, um, as well as public uh, meetings uh, for all boards and commissions that evening. Uh, we don't have a time location yet, but we are working uh, very quickly uh, to get all the details in place. And finally, the public is invited to an open house at the Harford, sponsored by the Simsbury Chamber of Commerce. That meeting will be held uh, February 26th from 8 to 9.30. Uh, there is no cost to attend the informational breakfast, but you do need to make reservations. So if anyone is interested um, in the facility, uh, please contact the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we're really excited that the uh, partnership with Harford continues and that we have a lot of um, interest in our economic development efforts. Just wanted to update the board. Uh, we'll move on to uh, approval of tax refunds. If someone could ask uh, Mrs. Seven to return, return to work. <clears throat> Uh, we have received a recommendation from our tax collector, Colleen O'Connor, uh, to, to approve tax refunds in the amount of $4,997.39. Do we have any questions? Move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next item is approval of a wetlands application for Simsbury Community Farms. Uh, Simsbury Community Farms is uh, 
must file an application to perform the installation of gutters and underground outlets to collect and discharge clean rainwater runoff in a safe buffer area adjacent to the wetlands. Uh, the project will control discharge of water with excessive nutrient load by redirecting storm water from pastures and preventing clean water from mixing with animal waste. I want to commend uh, the community farm for uh, continuing to upgrade the building. And I know we have several board members that may not have been out to the farm, but uh, we'll have to uh, schedule some time to uh, provide a tour. Uh, this is town land, so uh, the board of selectmen must authorize uh, the first selectman to sign the wetlands application, so it is town land. Um, there is a cost of $190 for um, this application, but because it's on town land, staff is recommending that we waive uh, the wetlands application fee, and that's $190. Any questions? A uh, question for you, Mary. Um, I think this is a really good thing. I'm assuming that there's enough money in the budget where we're not going to short the budget by approving the waiver of the hundred ninety. Yeah, it's um, it would be just money we didn't collect, so it wouldn't be an expenditure. It would be a loss of revenue because it's town owned land. Um, if if the town were to uh, apply for wetlands permits on our other lands, we wouldn't be charged a fee anyway. Mm -hmm. so but we're still yes. Our budget's going to be okay. We're not going to have a shortfall. Not of hundred ninety dollars. If we do, we're in real trouble. Well, <laughs> just asking the question. Good question. Any other questions? We'll we have motion? We'll refer. Second. Any questions? All in favor? All right. Aye. Thank you very much. Next item is to approve a donation of $7,768.80 from Stop and Shop uh, through the Feed a Friend program. Uh, as our uh, social service director notes, this is the second highest donation in New England. We want to thank Stop and Shop um, for their generous support to Simsbury. They have consistently uh, come to our aid and uh, collected donations and distributed to, the, to us. Um, we are seeing uh, an increase in the need for assistance. Um, all of our assistance is um, anonymous, it's confidential, So, uh, but we do track uh, the number of programs, uh, people participate, number of, um, statistically, how many people take advantage of the program. We don't know if it's one person or two, but we know um, that there is a, a distribution. Um, there are four programs, our mobile food share program, uh, which food share comes to Simsbury on alternate Mondays, our cheese day program, which is on the fourth Wednesday, our bread day program, which is every Tuesday, and our food closet program, which is every third Wednesday. Um, and of course, uh, assistance is provided when anyone um, needs it. You don't have to wait for those days. but. Um, we are seeing an increase. Uh, we had more than 5,000 uh, incidents of assistance over the last year, so we are seeing an increase in need. And certainly um, the donations go a long way in helping uh, those. So I would encourage us to uh, accept the donations with our thanks and also encourage folks who are in need to uh, make sure that they um, know there is help out there. So. Any questions? And I have a motion to approve. I'll make that motion. To second. With our thanks. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next item is an update on the proposed agreement regarding reciprocal easements between Big Y and International Skating Center, LLC. This is the same uh, document you saw previously with the land use restrictions removed. Um, the board had, um, and the town expressed concern about the land use restrictions. Um, I want to thank uh, Big Y and the Skating Center for coming to an agreement. Uh, the town, if you recall, had um, everything in place last August. We were ready to go to construction. Um, all that had happened was uh, for Big Y and the Skating Center to agree on the use of the driveway. Um, when we saw there was some uh, dragging uh, of this happening, we did uh, start to explore other options. Fortunately, those options are not needed because the parties have come to a mutually agreeable um, resolution. So I want to thank um, both Big Y and, and the Skating Center. This allows economic development to move forward, paves the way for uh, future development, and allows the uh, project to move forward uh, very quickly. Um, any questions? So they, they've actually signed this now? They, they have represented to us that they will sign it once the board oh, okay. approves, and then the town, uh, once we've received their signatures, then I will be authorized to sign it. Okay. Mayor. Yes. I just wanted to thank you and um, town staff for your work on this. The town doesn't usually get involved in disputes between private parties, but because this was an issue they weren't able to resolve on their own, the town took a lead and in initiative and made 
the settlement, helped facilitate the settlement and town attorney as well. So I want to thank you for your efforts and this will further economic development in the town and uh, hopefully bring in more revenue. Absolutely. Thank you. Do we have a motion to accept? Uh, so moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the next item is a set a public hearing date for February 12th for the naming of the Tom West Center at Simsbury Farms. Um, I want to thank uh, both Wayne Westbrook and Ron Urban, who are both here this evening. So thank you, uh, gentlemen, for being here and bringing this uh, forward to both the Simsbury Farms Committee um, and the Culture Parks and Rec Commission. Um, those of us who knew Tom West um, certainly are in uh, tremendous gratitude for all he did for the town as, as a volunteer. I, I guess he would be a super volunteer if you had to classify uh, all his contributions. Um, Tom was a very successful businessman, and then when he retired, he applied his uh, business acumen to our town, and he was instrumental in um, really leading the uh, golf course long-term capital plan, overseeing all the improvements at Simsbury Farms, um, providing guidance on uh, business plans, providing guidance on uh, capital plans, and uh, it's no surprise that uh, those who are, have been involved as Wayne and Ron um, in volunteering themselves for the town would bring this initiative forward. Um, if you recall, the board did adopt a naming rights policy, and one of the options under that policy um, is for the board to set a public hearing um, so that we can solicit comments and feedback as to whether uh, the town wants to pursue this recommendation. So that's before you tonight. Questions? I have a question. <laughs> um, I, I'm sorry I, I did not get to know Mr. West. He sounds like, like a really wonderful person. Um, and, and what I'm about to say has nothing to do with him. But um, I, I just received the naming policy today and I would like some time to digest it. And I, I skimmed through it and I saw one of the options was to to appoint a committee just to look at it and I'm, I'm only asking this because I I need some time to think about this policy I wasn't on the board when it was passed and I I don't really have a firm grasp on what our criteria are what our you know policy is when and when we do this how often we do this um, that type of thing and I, I would rather not go into this just you know sort of ad hoc all the time you know here's a name here's a name here's a name <laughs> um, so I would ask if we can and I'll defer to my more experienced members here <laughs> um, about setting up a committee just just to look at this I just need some time to look at it <laughs> and I appreciate that Cheryl, because you know obviously uh, we spent a lot of time on uh, I know. naming and policies and we looked at a lot of them um, we thought this was the best policy because it puts the public on notice that we're considering naming something. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, certainly you should do what you feel comfortable with. I think that if we set a public hearing, we could get some feedback on the public. If there's some uh, questions as to folks uh, wanting more information or if the town needs more information, we'll be able to set a committee up um, after that. I personally don't know what a committee would do because we haven't heard from the public, so I would yeah. be um, inclined to move forward with the public hearing. Uh, tonight so that we could put the public on notice and solicit public input but uh, certainly the board's uh, welcome to do whatever whatever they want I'm not sure what the committee would do either I saw that it was an option <laughs> when I just re read through it yeah. um, and and really my only reason for doing this and it has nothing to do with the individuals involved was just so so I can get a better understanding of how we're going to do this and how we do it in the future um, so uh, I, if we tabled yeah. it, what would we do next month? My, and my only other thought was February 12th is, you know, in looking at our calendars is, is a lot. <laughs> um, we have a lot of things coming up, and we're asking the public to attend a lot of public hearings in the very near I future. It's going to get worse. Oh, I know. Because but we're I, going into budget. So exactly. Well, right. that's my point, <laughs> is that, point. you know, we well, well, are, you I want everybody to have time to digest this. And, and so I, what are you suggesting tabling it until? Um, or extending the time frame, setting the public hearing for maybe after the, you know, May? Some of the, 
yeah, after the referendum. I don't know. I'm just thinking that people are. Well, I think that people being uh, asked to participate <coughs> in a lot of things right now. Yeah, there is a lot, and, <laughs> and it doesn't get and to put this you out know, of respect. You know, I I won't support that personally because out of respect for uh, Ron and Wayne that have brought this forward. I think they've spent a lot of time uh, with Culture Parks and Rec Commission. They've spent a lot sure, of time. Yeah. Uh, and. They deserve a public hearing. Now, we may choose not to move forward, but I think that um, our schedule is going to become increasingly busier um, after the February meeting because we move into public hearings for the budget. We move mm -hmm. into workshops. Um, May is the referendum. June, school vacation. I mean, there's never a good time to ask the public to participate. So um, personally, I'd rather set the public hearing for February 12th. But uh, the Board of Selectmen is welcome to comment. Nancy. Um, this is, and I was, I participated when we did force the Jim Gallagher way, um, and I think some of the post discussion around that was the idea of maybe having a committee that could look at some of these things beforehand. So it's uh, certainly I can only echo uh, very strongly what um, Cheryl is saying is that it's not um, any, out of any disrespect for Tom, nor would it have been for Jim, but um, I think, and you know, we have a, a good policy in place. I wonder if we should have another step to that process that allows for the committee to discuss. Um, we what do would that the with hometown be, hero. Who would, who would be on the committee? Um, well, we could set it up to relate to the hometown hero, or we might have some discussion. It's along those lines of honoring people who have served. So it's just a thought for creating um, a review process for the applications, because I do think we will see a lot of these. It is a good policy. It does recognize people's good work. Um, but I, I think in managing the process, that might be helpful to have that step within it. So, Lisa. I thank everyone for their comments. In this is a policy that was adopted by the Board of Selectmen is the policy that is in place. I don't think the time to relook at the policies while the game is being played. The, uh, our fine gentlemen and the, 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 help me with the name of the committee that. Parks and Recreation. Parks and Recreation. And the complex committee both. Mm -hmm. Did look at that with public audience. It's been on their agendas multiple times. If you want to, I think we need to follow the policy as it exists today. I think to change the policy and not give them notice, they are acting on uh, what the policy is today. I think if you feel that there's need to change to do it, we could certainly do that after this process is done. But we shouldn't tell people who are coming before us that they can't rely on the policy that the town has adopted. So I, I do think I, I will not support Cheryl's. Um, proposal on this because we have a policy in place, we have a procedure we can follow. If there is an outcry of public audience, we still have the opportunity to create a committee at that point or not take action. So it is not a done deal, but it does give notice. In the past, we did not have any process in place, and this is the process we all agreed to. Um, those who weren't on the board didn't agree to it, but as you know, you're legally bound to uh, the laws and ordinances and policies that this board has adopted in the past unless and until we change those by the proper process. And because this is what is in place, because it is what our applicants relied on, I think we should follow it. Oh. And so I will not I'm sorry, speaking. perhaps I misspoke. I wasn't saying change the policy. I, I saw when I read it today, when I got it, <laughs> that one of the options in the policy is to refer it to a committee. That's why I said that. I'm not asking anybody to change it here. It's, um, that's, I that's, think your colleague did ask for that. I'm sorry. I was, that's yeah. what I was, that's the only thing I read, and that's what it said was. So I'll entertain a motion. <laughs> I move. I'll make a motion that we set a public hearing. I'll second. For what date? For when? February 12th. I just make a personal comment that, Lisa, you make a good point. I, 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 it, my remarks were to change the process. It was to echo what um, Cheryl was talking about. So um, for the purposes of these gentlemen who have come forward in accordance to the policy that it is right now, then uh, you know I am in favor of supporting this. But I would like to see us, um, within the structure of the policy that currently exists right now, put into place a review prior to um, some things coming to us. So well, I would suggest that if people feel the policy as it is, is not adequate, that you prepare something uh, that you're comfortable with and bring it before the committee. It's not that, what does Cheryl's point It's not that the but policy is not like the committee. I'd like to know who. Mm -hmm. Can I finish? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like yeah. I'd like to, if you want a committee, I mean, the board is the legislative body to hold a public hearing and make that decision. 
think what I heard you say is have a hometown hero committee that's made up of residents and business people. And if that's what you're proposing, I'd like you to go back and bring it to this full board so we could have a discussion. And you know what, I would pull that back to say I would follow what the policy has to have a committee that's already set up within the policy just to And who would be on the committee? I, I'll go back to the policy and take a look at that and I'll come back and recommend something. Can I ask just a question? Yeah. We're on pace to do one of these a month so far. So we're going to run out of buildings at some point. And I, I, I can not to, I, I think Mr. West is very deserving, but I think the concern is not the individual in the process, but how often is this going to happen? I don't think any of us, when we passed this, thought we were going to do two of these in two months. Well, with all due respect, people were naming things without coming to the Board of Selectmen. Okay, well, I, I mean, I wasn't doing that. Well, but. but <laughs> I mean, the reason that we. I, I didn't name anything. You know, I mean, let's, in fairness, what was happening, and one of the reasons that we brought this here, Huh. And, and Lisa initiated that was because people were naming things in town without going to the legislative body. We had a um, football field named after Dave Holden without going through the Board of Selectmen, without having a public hearing. And so it was brought to our attention that, you know, yep. the Board of Selectmen is the legal body and we need to have public hearings and ask the public if they think it's a good idea. And isn't this a wonderful town that we have so many wonderful people who have done so much for the town that we want to remember them? So You're I can't right. answer your question as to right. how many of these will come forward, hopefully a lot, because that means that we are blessed to have people who we want to honor. Um, in some cases, we'll approve them. In some cases, we won't. I think the motion before us is to set a public hearing on this application. Yep. If board members are concerned about the naming policy or want to change it or say from now on we put a moratorium on naming, bring back whatever you feel to this board. We'll have a public hearing. We'll invite public comment. Uh, happy to entertain it. But I think the motion before us tonight, I don't think it's fair to mix uh, the philosophical discussions with the motion before us tonight, and that is only to set a public hearing for February 12th for Mr. West. That's the only motion before us. Fair enough. Excuse me, yeah. Question, because I'm still trying to figure out this whole process. Unfortunately, I had a problem with my email today. And I didn't get the, the policy till tonight. Um, so I've read through it, but even if we have a public hearing, we're, we're just getting information from Absolutely. the public at that point. Yeah. We're Absolutely. taking no Absolutely. action at that point. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. So um, the purpose of the public hearing, Mike, and I appreciate you know, uh, that you haven't seen this work before because you weren't on the board. So if I could explain, uh, the purpose of the public hearing we felt in adopting the policy was to put the public on notice that we were going to take a public entity and name it after an individual. Uh, what we were finding, as I said earlier, is that uh, groups were naming things after people without the town knowing. And so we'd see benches with people's names on it. Wonderful things, but maybe or maybe not, we wouldn't have allowed them there. And so we didn't. We wanted to get ahead of the process where any donation or naming or gift would come first to this legislative body. We could have a public hearing, give the public notice that we were thinking of doing this get some public comment and feedback, and then make a decision as to what steps we would take next. Okay. So that Thank was the intent of the policy. I think it's a good one uh, because it will avoid the problems we've had in the past where people were just naming things after folks in well-intentioned but maybe not consistent with the town's mission. In some cases, the town may have uh, had to pay to, to upkeep some of these gifts. So there's a, li there's a little bit of uh, importance in knowing what the gift is before we accept it and knowing what the imp implications are. Okay, thank so you. So that's and the purpose of it. Gentlemen, please, this is no reflection of Mr. West. I'm really talking about the process, not nothing Absolutely. to do with him, please. So we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor of setting a public hearing for February 12th, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries. I'll ask uh, the members who would like to amend the policy to please bring back um, recommendations to this board, and then we can consider it. Thank you. Uh, next item is approval of conservation and drainage easements uh, for Murphy's Turn subdivision. Uh, this uh, subdivision is a five lot subdivision at 46 Hildercrest Drive. The subdivision was approved by the Planning Commission and uh, subject to review and acceptance of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Board of Selectmen has to accept the conservation easement and drainage easements even though they've already been uh, reviewed and recommended by the Planning Commission. Uh, the reason it's before you tonight is because um, the mylars were not finalized up until about two weeks ago, so there was some delay between May and today, so the applicant wasn't ready to go. Now that we've received it, it has been reviewed by council. Um, I do believe that uh, the applicant is under a time constraint 
uh, to record uh, the conservation easements and drainage easements by February 7th. So I do uh, remind you there is some uh, time uh, constraints here. So any questions? That one's good. Can I have a motion to approve? We'll make that motion. Accept. I'm sorry. Accept. 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 Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, next item is uh, approval of a Connecticut Urban Forest Council application. Uh, we received word that there is funding available for under the Small Cities Grants Program for funding for the town to hire a forester to produce a forest management plan for Onion Mountain and Ethel Walker Woods. Um, the good news is, is that um, town staff has already been working on plans and has already uh, received estimates uh, for um, a forest management plan. This doesn't commit the town to do the forest management plan, but it'll give us uh, some funds to hire a forester to examine it and come back with a um, capital plan. So it's really a great program. Uh, we have tried to uh, receive these grants in the past. They're very competitive, and we're hoping that this time uh, our application will sparkle and we'll receive some funding. We do need authorization to enable the first selectman to sign the grant application, So, uh, and that grant is, uh, deadline is uh, before our next meeting, so I'd ask for uh, approval to uh, file for the Connecticut Urban Forest Council funding. Mary, just a quick question. Do we know if there's a, a match requirement on our end? There's if, no match. Okay. Perfect. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, next item is approval of solar ICT application. Um, we're um, very lucky to have uh, a number of volunteers from the Clean Energy Task Force here with us this evening. And uh, Tom Roy, our Public Works Director, is also here. Um, they have been hard at work finding uh, ways to encourage the use bless of solar. You. Bless you. And uh, there is a program that allows um, and encourages um, in residential solar programs. Um, and uh, I'll let Tom Roy give you the background. So welcome, Tom. Well, thank you, and, and like I said, we, we do have a clean energy task force uh, here with us, and if, if they'd like, I'd like them to actually present this with me, because really, this this is not so much a town initiative as it is a grassroots initiative. The town is going to, um, with your approval tonight, apply for this process, but all we're really doing is facilitating homeowners to get a better rate on solar panels to be put on residential homes. Uh, basically, what the program does is through um, folks like these here, they're going to go neighbor to neighbor, we're going to um, hopefully, if we're accepted, hold um, outreach meetings. We're going to explain to people what can be done. Um, working through the state program, we would have a, a preferred vendor that would be selected through a competitive process. And all of the residents would basically be agreeing to use this vendor to install solar panels on their home. As a result, they would get the discount associated with a larger purchase rather than the small cost of, of just on your home. The more people who sign up, the lower the cost is going to be. I'm also excited Jeff Shea is going to be able to facilitate this program because this was just recently done in Canton where Jeff played a, played a major role. So. I want to introduce our members of our... Sure. Um, Mark and Aika Scully are kind of taking the lead on this. Jim Ray is, is here who's been a longtime member as with um, Melissa Valentine. And then I know that we have a few uh, members looking to be appointed tonight as part of the appointments with Claudia, who was not able to make it tonight, but yes. it's, it, it's one of the more exciting um, committees here in town. I'm, I'm, I think this is going to be a great project for them. I think it's going to fit into to what you have here, which is people going around telling their neighbors, I have put solar panels on my house. This is a great thing. This is how the process works. It's, um, it's a great way to really increase the number of um, clean energy locations here in the in, in town. And the cost to the town, Mr. Roy? Zero. The liability <laughs> to the town, <laughs> zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that part I like. Zero. I had a question. Okay. You said, question answered. You said there was going to be residents going around talking to, talking to other residents. So is this like a door knocking campaign? I mean, how does this work? Um, they're going to be putting together um, their strategy for how they want to get the word out. I think in our preliminary conversations is the way things work best in town is through groups and committees, Rotary um, would be a great place. And what we would most likely as a town be doing is facilitating meeting space, having the folks from CFIA who are sponsoring this, the um, folks from um, whichever is our preferred vendor that would do the install in a room explaining how it works along with what's called solar ambassadors, which would be people who have put solar panels on their house and can explain either how well it's working, what the challenges are, 
what they would do differently to give that comfort that you can only get in that neighbor to neighbor relation. Again, this is a this is a very competitive process. So just because the board authorizes it tonight doesn't mean that the town center will be will be selected. Um, the application process is very laborious. It requires a uh, commitment from the town through the uh, support of the board of selectmen, also a commitment by town staff to help through uh, the RFP process, and certainly commitment from our volunteers uh, to help with the outreach, uh, really just to let folks know um, information about solar energy if they want to participate. Uh, it provides our residents with a lower cost um, option as opposed to a sensory did not participate. So I think it's a, a wonderful initiative, and I want to thank uh, the task force uh, for bringing this uh, to our attention, for your enthusiasm in uh, providing this information to our residents, and uh, thank Tom for um, his answer of zero. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tom, can I just ask you one quick question? Uh, my neighbor actually went solar, and um, so I called her when I saw this on the, but uh, they participated in a, in a different state program. Now, are there competing programs? Or I, I think the, the easiest answer I can say is there's a number of state and federal programs to encourage um, clean energy, solar energy. Mm -hmm. A couple of the federal programs, I believe, have recently um, sunsetted in certain terms of some of the tax rebates and incentives. This program is something that would be additive to any other available programs or so rebates. So it's in addition to state it programs is. that might all it already is. be in yeah, place. Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, there'd be nothing in participating in this that would exclude you from any other form of incentives or rebates. And if the um, town didn't authorize applying, then our residents couldn't participate. So mm -hmm. uh, sensory residents couldn't participate in the town of Canton's program right. uh, because that was solely uh, exclusion, mm -hmm. as exclusive to Canton residents. Well, they were very excited to hear about this, and you may have an ambassador on the way. So here, <laughs> get the name. You gotta get the name. <laughs> yes. I just, um, if we sign up so many people, might we be able to put solar on one of our buildings? <laughs> Can we work a... Uh, this is a residential solar program. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 is, it is residential solar, and I will tell you, nobody's been trying harder than this group and myself to get solar panels on town yeah. buildings. Um, there's right. been some new changes. Governor Relative's pledge, we already have earned seven kilowatts that just as we get this new pledge, which once we get through the Board of Education, we will have at least four educational demonstration purposes. We're looking at both the community farm and the high school, so... It's coming. It's in the process. Good. It's got to be. And as Jim said, there, it's a very uh, time-consuming process because you need all the approvals. Like the center has. But yeah, last year we participated in the um, it's called the ZREC program, where we would have done a power purchase agreement with <coughs> somebody else. So again, zero cost to the town would have installed solar panels. We had three buildings in town selected. Unfortunately, our proposal was not competitive enough to have made the first cut of the selection process. Um, it may have been a blessing in disguise because legislatively there have been changes in the state of Connecticut which now allow what's called virtual net metering, which means all of the town's electric meters can be grouped together. So at any one facility we could put up a very large solar array, possibly at a place that has less architectural significance than this building like maybe the highway department, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> and although, al al although the highway department was not viable for the ZREC program because we don't use enough energy there to compensate for all of this roof space. When you do the virtual net metering, solar panels at the highway garage can offset the electricity used at Eno, at this building, at the library. So it's something that you'll be seeing very soon. Thank you. All right. So Thank I'm you. sensing the board is ready to make a motion to authorize the approval of solarized CT application. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank we you. look forward to your updates after we get the award. Yes. Uh, at this point, I'm like going to, to uh, accuse myself from the meeting. When Claudia comes up, she's yes. a product of our system. Thank you. We'll make sure. She came through Sinsbury High School. She went and got her degree. Now she's coming back to support. Thank you, Jim. We'll make sure we uh, act favorably on that request. <laughs> um, I'll ask Lisa Hebner to give an update on the Aquarian Rate Increase Opposition Letter update. and. Uh, Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Jim. Sure. <laughs> no, 
nobody wants to hear the update. I know. <laughs> I think you're losing your audience here. Um, we just wanted to give folks an update on this issue. As you know, we've been working on this for a number of months, giving testimony, um, writing numerous letters, making phone calls to Pura. Uh, latest information we had was that they were going to voluntarily reopen uh, the hearing on part of their decision, especially um, Aquarian made a request and I called and they granted that they were going to open it. We since learned that they decided not to reopen the hearing, but they were going to issue an amendment to uh, their decision and we expect that on Wednesday. Um, this was not on their website. It was through the diligence of Tom Cook and counsel at, our, at the board's request to check in and see that we didn't miss any deadlines because they have not posted deadlines. Mm -hmm. In any regular manner, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a huge problem. Um, just to recall, they had initially proposed a 17.2% increase. They came back, and Pure actually did a press release saying, terrific, we got it down to 8.6. But as we actually read the opinion, there was a reference, and I can't remember on what page. I'm thinking it's 44, but it might be. It was a 150 page, and it said, except for the Northern District. And so, yes. <laughs> and so I asked um, Tom to write a letter to Aquarian on the Board of Selectmen's uh, request saying what does this mean for our district and only because we asked did we find out that oh ex yes it's 8.6 for everyone in the world except for you and uh, that as you Granby can and Granby and East Granby who are in the northern district and so as you can imagine that was a shock although I can't say unexpected given the treatment we've mm -hmm. received throughout this process. Um, this did prompt us to consult with council. We had an executive session last um, time we met and we're advised by council to draft a letter and we gave input, the whole board gave input as to the tone, which is a little straightforward. Straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> and direct, but it does make the point that um, 8.6 is too high. Mm -hmm. It starts there. If 8.6 is too high, 7.2 percent is so way too. 17.2 17, percent yeah. is too high. And then the other thing we wanted to make sure we pointed out is that the attorney general during this process said, "Look, if you're going to cause someone's rate to go up, you need to do it over time." 12 to 12 years. to 15 years. And that was not part of the decision, not part of the recommendation. And uh, we were curious why they did not, curious is a polite way to say it, why they did not address the Attorney General's um, concern. So he was copied on this letter, as was the Consumer Protection, as was the Director of Pura and uh, Aquarian. Did I miss anyone else that we? No, that's pretty bad. The Office of Consumer, did you say? Yes. Kind of, yeah. And then we did, the other thing we did is we thought it would be more effective to get all hands on deck. And so we did uh, reach out to uh, State Senator Kevin Witko, State Representative John Hampton. We had our entire board, who's not recused, um, sign it. We had um, William Smith, the town manager of East Granby, um, James Hayden, first selectman. Town of Granby. Town of Granby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. East Granby. East Granby. East Granby. I got him flipped. Sorry about yeah. that, guys. <laughs> Smith of the town of Granby and Hayden of the town of East Granby. And we also had the Simsbury Fire District um, president sign because in public safety meetings, we were hearing that um, they were going to have to increase their charges. And those charges would then, it wasn't just a cost to the fire district. That would also be passed on to our residents. So not only would we get the 17.2%, but the fees that were being charged to the fire district would be passed along to our residents. So in short, we are very upset with the way this has rolled out. We want to make clear that uh, we feel very strongly about this. We have written to them, and we expect a positive uh, response and we are looking forward to that and I invite my colleagues to chime in on this. I was just going to say I think you summarized that very well and very politely and then <laughs> at the end we respectfully requested that mm -hmm. Pura lower the proposed 8.6 percent rate and phase in the um, equalization surcharge so those are the two key walk away points from these guys and as Lisa mentioned Tom's timing on this was fantastic because of the meeting that's going down on Wednesday so um, we're, we remain hopeful that this will um, 
have some positive impact in our favor uh, because it does not only hit the fire district, but it hits our municipal budgets through uh, Simsbury Farms Complex Committee, through you know everything you can think of, the uh, mm -hmm. golf course. And, and so it comes back to the residents threefold through the bills they pay, what they're taxed through the town, what they're taxed through the fire district. And it's a, just a significant and outrageous um, increase that um, mm -hmm. wouldn't be acceptable in any other aspect of of our um, lives or our governance of the town, we would never think of raising our budget 8.6% or 17.2% for that matter. We need a room much larger than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, oh, And it's disappointing, again, it goes back to the lack of transparency that we right. complained about as we did in hearings. The press release said it was 8.6. There was no mention of the exception for the Northern District. And while you could find that in the reading of the opinion, and we did find it, reading 150 pages and writing the letter to Aquarian, um, it, it needs to be a far more transparent process, and we hope that that will change in the future. Right, and Lisa, you're bringing up a great point, and that's that's why I think this board has spent so much time on it. Is is even when people read the you know read the press release, they had no idea. Eight point six. All right, that's a lot, but all right, how much really is it? No, it's seventeen point two. This is a really big deal for the town of Simsbury, and, and I think if people understood it better, we'd have we'd have more folks concerned. You know, there was a lot of folks at the public hearing. And uh, you know, again, as Nancy just said, if we had 17.2 percent coming out of this this body, we need a more, far bigger room to get yelled at for for many, 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 many hours. Two years right, right. Come quick enough. And rightfully, rightfully so. So, this if anyone is, else would like to join in our complaining, that's, then, that's, that's uh, why we keep talking about it. Feel free is, to jump in because we are not letting it go. Right. So we are stuck with this. We are, once this happens, there's no going back. There's no dialing it back. There's no rate no. decreases. We are stuck with this until they try to get another one in the next couple of years. So this this really is an important issue and why we're talking so much about water. And why so many people have joined us in signing this right. letter. It is a not only a town of Sinsbury issue, but we thank our partners and our neighboring towns for their participation. Yeah. Right. Truly bipartisan all the way around the Absolutely. board. Absolutely. I mean yeah. this is one great to we, see. This Absolutely. is this is crazy. There's there's not a person in Sinsbury who should be opposed to our position on this. Well, in <laughs> In thanking you because the squeaky wheel gets the grease, you said you've made several phone calls. Just the one. I, they called me back with quite a number of people. Lisa's on the, on the block list down there. <laughs> yeah, That's maybe. Okay. It's all right. No, no worries, I was nice. I was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, truck some water over to your place when you get cut off. But it is important that we all, and we, this board has done this as a group, and we've done everything as a group. There's been no... Um, no. Mm -hmm. Uh, that we speak with one voice and speak directly and clearly as to what we want. And what we want is to be treated fairly. We, we want to be them to be respectful of the current economic conditions, mm -hmm. as we all are. As Nancy and Sean made the great point, in this time of economic need, you cannot, especially for people living on fixed incomes, put forward a 17.2% increase. It's it's irresponsible. What I think gets me the most on this, too, is the level of planning that we go to, not only in our operating budgets, but our capital improvement plans over the long term. And this is exactly the reason why they're needing to come back to the users, is because they clearly cannot have a business model that represents any good long-range planning to have to have these kinds of rate increases is just um, absolutely unacceptable. So. Yeah. Um, we don't have to take any action on this because we've done uh, our work here. So yep. I think we can move on to uh, the next item if Mary wants to. Quick, let's form some committees before Mary gets back. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would oppose that. <laughs> Come on, we won't tell. <laughs> I don't really think she'd mind too much. <laughs> <laughs> We're forming committees. Come on. <laughs> Lisa wouldn't let me inform any without you. <laughs> we put you on a committee, you don't mind. Don't you? <laughs> we'll put her on two. <clears throat> Thank you. We'll move on to the agenda. I believe the appointments are next. Uh, the appointing community for care committee, as we heard Pastor Woody say, um, it's really uh, designed to be a volunteer group. Um, he suggested some folks who should be involved. That would include town staff. Um, as well as representatives from the school system, as well as representatives from the public. So uh, I think tonight we have a motion to um, endorse the Committee for Care and uh, support uh, the nominations, and uh, we'll get some additional names at our next meetings. Is that? Yeah, I would just add through the process that the town always follows. We'll have the first selectman's office put out a press release, mm -hmm. sending applicants to the first selectman's mm -hmm. office, and then you know if we get more than 
we need ask you to appoint two members of this board to review the Perfect. applications. Perfect. I also um, suggested when in one of my conversations with Woody that um, I, I would be willing to volunteer as the liaison to aging and disability on this committee only because of the multi-generational aspect of it. And you all can decide whether that's appropriate or not, I but I, I told great. him I was willing uh, to do that. Lisa has been uh, the point person as a representative. Uh, no, I understand that. I just and uh, Board of Ed, and certainly, uh, mm -hmm. Cheryl, if you're interested from the aging and disability, I think there's the more the merrier. So I think two members of the board uh, certainly would be welcome. And, and I'm, I'm happy to do that. I great. just suggested it as part of the multi-generational approach. So <laughs> can I have a motion to um, support the Community for Care Committee? I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So approved. Thank you. Uh, next item is appointing tourism committee members. If you recall, uh, we did uh, get a request from tourism to add Diane Phillips, Charmaine Seavey, and Steve Mitchell to the tourism committee. I'd ask for a motion to approve those members. So at this point, we're expanding the yes. size of the committee? Yes, they okay. asked those members to be added. Okay, I'll make that motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you. Uh, next item is to appoint uh, Fra Francis Kelly as a regular member of the Public Building Committee with the expiration of January 1st. Uh, 2018 with our thanks he currently serves and so he's being reappointed do we have a second second all in favor aye, aye. thank you uh, next item is appointing claudia sirakowski as with our thanks to serve as a member of the clean energy task force i'll Can move I that to approve i'll second it any questions all in favor aye, aye. Thank and you. welcome back to simsbury yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes welcome back how did we let her go oh yeah she had to go to school <laughs> Uh, next item is to appoint a senior center Eno Memorial Subcommittee. Uh, these are the folks that uh, basically have uh, helped us uh, narrow down site selections to forward to the Board of Selectmen. Um, there are a number of staff members on here, Kathy Marshall, Mickey lacourse Beck, uh, Sarah Nielsen from Main Street, Jeff Shea, our town engineer, Rich Swiskey, our town engineer, and I was recommending Mike Payne uh, represent uh, the Board of Selectmen since he is the Public Building Committee. Uh, are you a public building committee liaison? No, you're not, but you I don't have think I am. fewer uh, liaison appointments, so I thought you had time to give to this committee. <laughs> Isn't that boy, nice of me? Boy. Isn't that nice of me? You've been volunteered. Thank, thank you for setting me up so nicely. <laughs> I think that was a positive thing. So I'm recommending that we reappoint all of the people who are currently served with the mission. I've asked Mr. Ostop to chair. <laughs> The committee, uh, their mm -hmm. task remains to um, have a couple more meetings to evaluate the existing recommendations uh, to look at. They wanted to look at some additional um, mission statement. They wanted to look at some additional um, geriatric input and to come back to this board in time for our budget process. So I would ask that we uh, reappoint the senior center subcommittee and uh, ask them to report back to the board of selectmen uh, with uh, a recommendation. Yes. Um, and this is just to clarify, so in appointing board members, the board members themselves, in other words, there's staff and then there's board members. Well, see, we had a senior center subcommittee that wasn't appointed by the board of selectmen. They were just meeting on their own. But uh, I think at our last meeting, the, one of the parties moved forward to formalize it. So I just gave a list of who's on it and just asked us to ratify it again. So uh, it's one of those... Uh, so quasi subcommittees, they really have been operating without us appointing them, but uh, this is a formalization of who's been meeting. So it's a subcommittee of the of public the building. Of oh, of the board of selectmen. Oh, because it's a public building committee. I was confused as to yeah. what we're subcommitteeing of. Okay. The board of okay. Thank you. And Mary, can I just ask one more? So, and this goes to all subcommittees. Can we appoint non-residents of Simsbury to our subcommittees? Staff can be on it. They can't vote. They can be on it, but they can't vote. Right. So they're member. Okay. Right. So, that's so um, in speaking with Dick Ostop okay. today, just to clarify the mission and the time frame, because we do want to get the recommendation back as soon as possible, oh, yeah. he asked me to publicly uh, um, say that staff is not voting, so it's not as big a committee as would appear. And if anyone else is interested in participating, the meetings are open. And if more people want to join the subcommittee, again, it's really a, an, an informal group. We just yep. wanted to get as much input as possible on the different sites to evaluate the process so it could come back to the Board of Selectmen so we could set a public hearing. Absolutely. And, no, and my question doesn't surround this yeah, committee, no, just, just, just for around the new process. Members, I'm yep. trying to give some yep. of the background and mm -hmm. history. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to approve the residents as voting members and staff as participants Support, of the committee yeah. is, is exactly. essentially what we're moving exactly. and approving. Okay. Okay. Just want to understand. And again, it's not a subcommittee that comes to the political parties. It's really a group of interested folks who have 
um, expressed interest in helping us evaluate the options. And so yep. um, that's why we left it a little loose as to um, reappointing the same people who have been coming. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Yep. Can I have a motion to approve? Move that we approve. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yes, you're uh, next item is to appoint retirement plan subcommittees. So uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, we have uh, recommended that Lisa Hebner continue on as the Board of Selectmen representative and that we add Cheryl Cook from the Board of Finance. They um, informed us that they would like Peter Askham and Nick Mason to represent the Board of Finance. Uh, the ongoing Board of Ed representatives are Mike Goman and Mike Wade, and at-large representatives include uh, Paul McElhaney and Phil Schultz from our insurance committee. Uh, we think this program worked very well. Um, it gives um, each of the boards input into looking at the um, retirement plans and report back to our individual boards. Uh, we think it's a better process than having uh, just the Board of Finance or just the Board of Selectmen or just the Board of Ed. There also is a cost associated with having Bless you. Our Bless professionals you. come back and update us. So having um, all the boards getting the same information at the same time and um, involved in making decisions, uh, I think, makes a better product for our taxpayers. And also it helps Please. with negotiations because a exactly. lot of the pension decisions we make do impact our uh, employee negotiations and how much we can offer and what we're able to bargain with. That's a good point. And I should um, let the public know and the board know we'll be seeing, uh, because we've had this committee, we did see some changes uh, that we uh, were all able to implement in our contracts that allowed us to get one carrier, one insurance carrier. And that will allow us moving forward to have some um, efficiencies and some cross-training. And that would not have been possible because all the contracts had different provisions in it. So it took us about five years to get to the <laughs> point uh, where all the contracts allowed a single carrier. And now we can go forward and start to see some of those efficiencies and some of those cost savings um, as a result of all of our hard work and our working together. So it's a, a great a great program. So I'd ask for a motion to approve. Move that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, next item is the appoint, confirming the appointment of the town engineer, uh, Jeff Shea. Jerome Shea is his official name. And again, you have um, his uh, background. Uh, we went through a very exhaustive uh, process to select a town engineer. We had, as I said earlier, a number of excellent candidates. Um, Mr. Shea came in as our number one candidate. and. If the board would like to be bored with the details of the process and the um, interviews, and uh, we can certainly bore you um, for a long time if you want. But suffice it to say that this was a very extensive and exhaustive search. Um, town staff did a great job interviewing. Um, we did a great job uh, reviewing um, the right uh, person to step into Rich's shoes. And uh, thanks to Rich for staying on during the transition through June. Um, this board uh, authorized, um, it'll be a nice transition and Rich will be able to uh, really share with Jeff a lot of the background and experience and all of his expertise um, before he hands over the reins to uh, Mr. Shea. So uh, the charter does require us to appoint Mr. Shea officially, so we'd ask for a motion to approve. I'll move that. Second. I'll second. Oh, sorry. Oh, lots of seconds. Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, next item is to accept the resignation of Bill Ketchabaugh from the Public Safety Subcommittee. Uh, with our thanks, Mr. Ketchabaugh has done a great job um, and loves our town as we love him and I uh, want to thank him. In conversations, and I'll ask Lisa to report, but um, the Public Building Committee would like to continue to have business representatives, so they have issued a call to um, the business community for uh, to fill this vacancy. So I don't know, Lisa, if you have any other update. I think on you that. mean the Public Safety Public Safety Committee? Yes, thank you. What the Public Building Your Committee? <laughs> <laughs> I just got on. Come on, come on. Come on. I'm on top of Lisa, it. Did yeah, you want sure. I would be. I was. I'll give other updates on the Public Safety, but for now, one of the things that uh, Kevin um, Kowalski recommended to Mary and I um, was that we add members of the business community to the public safety because it's also our civil preparedness committee as well and the state statute does suggest that that is a useful addition. We did talk about, um, we have two obviously, two organizations, Chamber and Main Street, not wanting to pick one over the other. We were going to extend the offer to both. Um, obviously coming back to this board when we have the names and they have to go to their boards um, to see if this is something one, they want to do. And speaking with both their directors, the directors were positive about it and thought it would be positively received by the boards, but that's still in the process. The other um, recommendation from Kevin was that we also reach out to the clergy. The clergy has a group of people that meet and represent and ask for 
one of their members to come, which is also a recommendation or an option in the state statute. And we thought that that was important, especially in the when there is a need of shelter or services, they can be very effective in getting out the word and helping us do alternate. Yeah, as we know, First Church served as an alternate shelter site, so they are very effective in that. And so, those were the two recommendations by the public safety. They put out feelers before coming to this board because I didn't want to come to this board if nobody was interested. <laughs> but, but it appears there may be some interest, and I hope by next time I will have some names for you to approve. Excellent. So, can I just ask again, not to be the procedural pain tonight, but we don't appoint the public safety subcommittee. Mary does. Yeah, but we endorse it. We're gonna we're gonna bring the full public safety committee uh, back to this board for approval. It's a subcommittee okay. of the board of selectmen. So again, it, it even though there's not really a lot of flexibility because it's the police chief, it's the social yeah, service director. It's the same kind of thing, right? right? Some folks that live thing. in town, some right. folks that don't. Right. But it is non voting good. members and voting members. Right. So, right. But it is important that the board of selectmen ratify who's on it so that um, you know, we have a, a representative as uh, re requested by the public safety. Center. I agree with you. I just the only thing we should look at though is the charter specifically gives you the power to appoint the two board of selectmen members. So if we were to, I'm not suggesting we would, but if we were to change that, that's going to be in conflict with the charter. So we need to just correct. Make sure so that. again, it's just a um, a validation of who's on it okay. and the members as in particularly in this case where we had one business representative. There's really no. Um, process to add right. more business representatives. So yeah. I left the Public Safety Committee to decide how they wanted to fill it, and they had a discussion. So we oh, may see awesome. more members coming back. Nancy, so, so you were there as well. Did you want to add to that? Yeah, and I just wanted to say, because I reached out to Tom, and I apologize because I meant to email you, and, and um, I had a, a, um, Gary Wilcox uh, contact me with um, Bill Ketchaba saying that he was going to be stepping down. And so through Tom's help and um, Carolyn's help, we just clarified that it's the um, fire district seat, so to it speak. Is. So it goes to all right. this. And so they just had some confusion. They weren't aware that they there wasn't a process here they had to go through, but they just had to say, okay, Bill's stepping off, so Gary's going to come but on. But Bill was, um, no, actually, Bill is the business seat. Not the fire district seat. Okay, so then so we need, we to, need have to have a conversation yeah. because yeah. Kevin Kowalski made it very clear to my conversations, and I don't know, mm -hmm. I didn't know about yours, and you didn't mention that to me. So yeah, and um, I, but it, but yeah. I'll I will take care of talking to Kevin Kowalski on this and clarifying before this we was back. not brought up at the public safety. Yeah, no. so no. let's not have off the record conversations that. Or may not reflect what the public safety committee decided. Well, I think also so, talk to Carolyn because there was some yeah, confusion. So we'll figure well. that out. Yeah. I have yeah. one other okay. question about the members. Um, because only because I received an inquiry from Ed LaMontagne, who's the executive director of the Housing Authority, um, in my capacity as liaison. Um, and he wanted to know if it was acceptable under the statute and the um, committee rules that he participate in this committee. I know he goes to the meetings. Yeah, uh, the Housing Authority has been used as alternative shelter site. It's a warming center and it right. is always available right. during emergencies to the people. You know, they use Virginia Connolly for the Owen right. Murphy residents. And Again, um, Mr. Um, Ed is both a volunteer and a staff person. So what we've asked. Um, well, he doesn't work for the town. He, yeah. he works for the housing authority. Yeah, I know, but he, so no, he works for the housing authority. He gets paid by CHFA. You know, he's not a correct. But I'm but I'm saying he has two capacities. One, we work with him in his role right. as a paid staff person and as a volunteer. So through the Aging Disability Commission. So my point is, uh, he's not Lisa. I don't think I don't. I'm confused. Well, he, he, I think Mary's point is he's, he serves both as chairman of the Aging and right. Disability. Yes, he and does. he has a job that is deals with the town in a right. regular Right. So place. my point was is. I'm just saying he approached me. I'm just oh, no, bringing it up. My point is the me. Public Safety Committee, Kevin Kowalski, the chief, decide who should be at the table. Mm -hmm. And rather than us pontificating, I think it's important that it go back to Public yep. Safety Subcommittee. And Happy to consider I'm, it. They I'm can just consult. in my yeah. effort to be so. transparent. I'm just saying he yeah. contacted me and asked me about that. So that's. But he, but let me just say our meetings are open to the public. And, so. uh, you know, I will. As chair, I'll always entertain if there's time permitting. If there's somebody has some an addition to add, mm -hmm. you know, we can always make a motion to amend the agenda to permit a public comment if there is a need for one. And we do have public audience, so. And we can just why don't you just clarify that your next meeting the members and who they represent because okay. I think there's some confusion. Absolutely. So, obviously. Okay. Right. I, I just didn't want to <coughs> respond not knowing what the answer was, yeah. so I was. Uh, <laughs> we just get it clarified. Yeah. <laughs> so Mary, are we accepting this resignation or not? Because we never we never put him on there, did we? We sh we should formally accept it. He doesn't want to be on, and I think the record should reflect that he's no longer participating. 
and then we could ask the public safety to send us a list of who they consider to be on public safety. It's never been a political appointment. It's always no, been. No, I'm not suggesting it should be. I just, right. it's so, all, I mean, in my time on here, we've never appointed anybody in the public safety subcommittee. So I just, if we don't appoint them, I didn't know how we could accept their resignation. But I think whatever, we should we, whatever we need to do. Thank Mr. <laughs> Ketchabaw for his service. I'm happy to do that. <laughs> How about that? Thank you. Goodbye. I make that motion there. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, and just uh, on appointments, we are still soliciting names for the Economic Development Task Force. We don't have any to go forward. I would like clarification. My understanding is that both Nancy and Lisa are supposed to be those names. I know that you did send out a press release just to have folks contact you, so I want to make sure that um, the board's direction was accurate. And that, and also Hiram sent something to the town, and some are coming to him, most are copying me, I'm forwarding them all to him. And so what I just mentioned to Lisa was that um, I thought it was appropriate that Hiram and she and I get together and to review those, and we will do that. And so, if in future correspondence, it would be appropriate to have both board members involved in reviewing the applications. I just wanted to make sure that. Right, oh yeah, that, that was the intention from the okay. very beginning. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, next item is approval of the minutes. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Oh, so moved. moved. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Second. Any comments, corrections, changes? Mm -hmm. I am out of comments for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing so I did notice. Uh, like to Mike. Be able to <laughs> if I could have the floor for Mike. Yes. Um, when we went into executive session, the uh, assessor, John Destin. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Kathy, can you make a note uh, that the assessor was also. The secretary had missed that detail. Yes. <laughs> I just want to make sure I go to the right place. Yes. Okay. I think uh, we should also make sure that the town attorney is in here as well. Oh, that's true. He, he, yeah. mm -hmm. he was in He's in there. Yeah. 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 So we'll yeah. put them near each other so that. Okay, with that change, any other corrections, changes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any updates? Yes. Lisa. <laughs> I'm on a roll. Um, I just wanted to let folks know that at the public safety meeting, Kevin Kowalski did inform us that um, the fire department will doing, be doing a presentation um, for businesses. It's open to every business in town, sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. It's on February 11th from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. at the main fire station on Hot Meadow. Non-members are welcome, but registration is required on the Chamber of Commerce um, website. It is presented by the Simsbury Fire District to meet and discuss fire inspections, what should I expect, and emergency management, what should I be doing. Um, I did give you the update on the recommended additions to the Public Safety Committee. And, um, Cantor Mark Perman was the choice of the clergy, but like I said, we'll present all the names next time when we have them. In terms of the Board of Education, I wanted to let folks know that our next Senior Citizen Boys Basketball Night is February 24th. Dinner is, is at 5.30 and the game at 7. It is free to seniors with their VIP passes, but reservations are required through the Senior Center, 658-3273. And I wanted to present some correspondence I received when I visited the civics class of Mr. Auntie's class. They did a follow-up exercise, unbeknownst to me, where they uh, looked at the property on the Hartford um, land and came up with suggestions to produce taxable income for the town. And the winning proposal was a multi-use recreational facility, but they included all the proposals. So Thank I want you. to give this to you so you can convey it to the Hartford Subcommittee. I will absolutely uh, <laughs> present this to the Hartford Subcommittee. And I appreciate the hard work. Much. I mean, it, great. it's a great way for the students to participate in the local democratic process. Absolutely. And, and to make sure their voice is heard. winning recommendations, right. so we'll take a look. They were so pretty active you. in the charrette, so. And, that, yes. and thank Ms. Round, Roundtree for her thank initiative there. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Any other reports? No. If not, can we have a motion to adjourn? Move that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you.